Oh, hello there. I didn't see you come in. Come along on my adventure in drinks I've never had before on How to Drink. I have a, an occasional series uh, that I do on Patreon. It's a Patreon exclusive. I call it Drinks I've Never Had Before, or Dinah for short. And I'm going to do a little taste of that here today. Uh, this is a drink I've heard about a lot of called the Star Cocktail. I've never had it before. I haven't tested it at all. I've got an entry here on page 272 of David Wondrich's Imbibe. Book uh, is available in a link below in the comments. Uh, and we're just going to make the sucker. It's a great history piece here, but the important bits is that we should fill a uh, mixing glass with half full of ice, two dashes of gum syrup, three dashes of Peychaud's or Angostura bitters, one half jigger of apple brandy, one half jigger of Italian vermouth. Mix it, strain it in a cocktail glass with a twist of small piece of lemon peel on top. Mr. Wondrich goes on to explain that he prefers uh, Angostura here and that Harry Johnson suggests adding a dash of Curacao. Uh, there's also a Manhattan Club version which uh, involves yellow chartreuse and cherry bounce. I don't have any yellow chartreuse so I'm not even going to venture into that territory. Uh, so without further ado, let's try this drink, the Star Cocktail that I've never had before. It's interesting, I think that if I'm not mistaken, he says in another section that at one time the only two drinks he knew of, I think it's under the Jersey Sunset, that involves Applejack with a star cocktail and the um, Jack Rose. So, and I've never had a star cocktail, so I'm excited to try it. It sounds good. It's sort of like a Applejack version of a Manhattan. Okay, so now um, the book says we should start with the ice in the glass. I don't really see any benefit to that, so I think we'll start with not the ice in the glass. We're gonna start with the vermouth. Uh, we're gonna do an ounce and a half of our delicious Antica Formula. I believe this is the style of vermouth that is referred to in the book when it says Italian vermouth. Um, at the very least, I'm pretty sure it's gotta be a sweet red vermouth. Uh, maybe a Punta Mez would be correct, but I, I can't think that we're going very wrong here. Um, I have an ounce and a half of Laird's Bottled and Bond Apple Brandy. Truly, we might be better with an older Laird's Applejack, but as this is drinks I've never had before, I really didn't even know I was making this drink until about three minutes ago. Um, so I'm going with what I happen to have in stock, and I'm fresh out of the 12 and 7 year apple brandy. Um, I think this will serve us well. I have my gum syrup here. This isn't really a dash or top. I suppose I could put a dash on it. It's interesting that in a lot of these older books, they talk about dashes with something like gum syrup. Gum syrup is so thick that I don't even understand how you would dash it. So I dash when it asks for a dash from a bar spoon, I think. I do this kind of a little visual thing, an ocular pat down, if you will. That's like a dash, I think. It's not quite the whole bar spoon. I think that's two dashes. Uh, so we're gonna put in three dashes of Angostura bitters. And uh, at that, we're gonna need some ice. Put this ice up. So I haven't even, I'm, I'm over here. The olfactory elements of this drink are hitting me really strongly already. And it's just such fresh and apple-y. Essence of apple it just smells really nice. Says we should garnish this with a twist of lemon. There's the star cocktail. Let's see how it is. I'm excited actually. Lemon is a dominant part of the nose and I'm a little bit disappointed by that because honestly, up until I added the lemon, I was really smelling the apple essence. And if I were to make this again, and this is the first time I've had it, I might actually rethink that lemon twist thing even though the book calls for it because 
I miss that. I like that apple essence. Wow, that's so freaking great, man. It is so... What? That is a surprising drink. That's incredible. It's a really long evolution in this drink. I was not expecting anything like that. That is so good. So, somehow... Oh my god, that's so cool. The combination of Antica and the uh, Applejack. The lead notes is actually like bitter chocolate. Like a very uh, dark chocolate right away. And then that... eventually fades into like that apple essence, but not like what it tastes like when you bite into an apple, but what you would imagine like um, distilled and concentrated apple perfume stripped of all of its sugars to taste like, like an apple that just effuses and permeates your, um, your sinuses, your olfactory, it really hits you. Um, and then that gives way, it's a really neat drink. Yeah, that dark chocolatey, bittery kind of thing, but in a sweet, pleasant way. That apple kind of thing, sort of, with a little bit of lemon in it, and gives way to a kind of caramelly sweetness. That is really cool. That is awesome. Man, I've got to say. Ooh, and then there's like a vegetal thing that kind of comes in right there at the very end. It kind of has a very long tail in the evolution. There's a good, the volume gets turned way down, but it keeps playing for a long time. What a surprising drink. And I was prepared to have to do all kinds of improvements there, because a lot of times when I do these uh, drinks I've never had before, I drink it, I'm like, eh, it's not so great, but let's try some other stuff. It's not gonna happen today. This drink is great. I will try Harry Johnson's dash of curacao in the glass. Um, and this is a thing that I'll do uh, just out of interest of completion, we're gonna do a very light, like, light. That's a dash, that's definitely a dash. At least it's a dash that my dashers would supply. I'm curious, I actually think that this is gonna be a mistake. I think it's gonna actually, well, not a mistake, I'll explain, let me taste it. Yeah, so that makes the drink a lot more approachable and more accessible, I think, um, but it does kind of pinch back a little bit of those dark chocolate notes I was getting in the lead that I was so surprised by. I could see how those could be that that dark chocolate flavor that I was getting. Not everybody even likes dark chocolate. I could see that being off-putting to some people. I love it and I was really surprised by it. And I love being surprised by a drink when you put a set of ingredients together and get some, some kind of amalgam that you were never anticipating. It's so wonderful to me. The curacao kind of robs that uh, from of the drink a little bit. So I would skip the curacao on this one. It's not for me. I am curious about how that yellow chartreuse cherry bounce version works. I might have to try that one on the Patreon side. So David Wondrich says you should go with the, an older, like a seven or 12 year old apple brandy from Laird's. I don't know. I, I, I think that maybe that's true if you were using a different vermouth, but um, this Antica formula is so forceful in its flavor, that uh, the, the stronger, younger, brasher apple brandy kind of stands up to it. I think, a I imagine it's it's probably pairing better. If I was using um, a more reserved um, vermouth, maybe a more oaked um, apple brandy might make more sense. And I think that would be kind of a different drink, actually. It's an interesting thought. That is great. It's a great drink, real surprise. I made a star cocktail, equal parts Applejack and vermouth, a couple dashes of bitters, a little bit of gum syrup, and we tried it with some curacao. It wasn't for me, actually. Um, I wonder how that would be with chocolate bitters, really double down on the chocolate aspect of it. Usually that's a mistake, actually. Usually that throws things out of balance when you think, oh, more of that would be good. Nah, it tends not to be true. I'm on Twitter at How to Drink. I'm on Instagram at How to Drink. I'm on Patreon at patreon.com slash how to drink. And if you like stuff like this, me trying drinks I've never had before, kind of riffing on them and experimenting on camera. If you like that kind of thing, well, that's over there on Patreon. I can't commit to always having an episode of drinks I've never had before, but when I can, I produce uh, exclusive content on Patreon. And this is an example of what that show is like. Don't you know that you are a shooting star? Yes, you are. Isn't that how the song goes? 
They make that up. You're a Carpenters fan. Help me out. Well, that's the whole show, guys. I'll see you next week. I don't have a great button today. Oh, speaking of buttons and pins, check out this sweet how to drink pin. You can find that in my how to drink merch store, which I will set up at some point after shooting this.